a good evening dear saints it's pastor I'm at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne Indiana with our vicar now I'm recording this in September but it will air in October this is the devotion for I believe it's Tuesday October 13th and the tools that I usually use to do this are still back in the church so I'm doing it uh, the old school way. We're right out of the hymnal. I have my phone for the scripture reading and we'll follow along this way. It is the reading, these are the readings for October 13th from the Daily Lectionary or the Treasury of Daily Prayer. This evening we're go going to do the section on uh, early evening. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice, joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Our psalm for today is Psalm 111. You can find that if you have your hymnal with you, right in the front of your hymnal. This isn't as quick as when I have everything laid out in front of me in the chapel at Divine Shepherd. The psalmist writes this, Praise the Lord! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him, and remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hand are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All of those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading for today from the book of St. Matthew, the 12th chapter, beginning at the 22nd verse. Then they brought to him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute, and Jesus healed him so that they could both talk and see. All the people were astonished and said, Could this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, It is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. Jesus knew their thoughts, and he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How can this kingdom stand? But if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your people drive them out? So then, they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or again, how can anyone, eat, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. And so I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven either in this age or the age to come. Make a tree good, and its fruit will be good, or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad, for the tree is recognized by its fruit. This is the word of the Lord. Well, dear saints, I'm sitting at the campus 
of Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne, Indiana. It is our sister, two seminaries, the sister seminary to Concordia Seminary St. Louis, where I graduated a number of years ago. As we're here, we're in the, the uh, program for uh, the SMP program, learning how to be a mentor for our new vicar. He's learning, he has an intensive class this week. Uh, what a great gift it is to be on such a beautiful campus. If you look over my shoulder, you see the lake that sets right in front of the chapel, and the lake extends over in front of the library. This afternoon, as we were taking a tour of the library, one of the mentors was with me, and he said uh, he would never be able to study in the library. And I leaned over to him and I said, no, neither would I. I would always be dreaming about fishing in that pond. There are some distractions by the beauty that God has given us here. In the Gospel reading for today, Jesus is speaking to uh, those who are against him. And as they are against him, trying to find a way to condemn him again, they accuse him of casting out demons because he is part of the devil, or using the devil to cast out demons. Jesus quickly says that you can't, a house divided against itself can't stand. To divide and conquer is a, a common way of defeating your enemy, to lessen their forces so that you can overcome them. When Jesus is speaking about this, there's always a lot of people that want to know about this. It seems like we're fascinated by the occult, by demons, demon possession or demon oppression. Either way, when we talk about these things, we have to make sure that we don't get caught up in this world of spiritual warfare. It has a dark side that by our own curiosity sucks us in. Right here on the campus, one of my good friends, Dr. John Dreyer, he is one in our Senate who has done a lot of work in dealing with demons, in exorcisms and things like that. And every time I hear him speak, he cautions us not to go looking into this area, not to go uh, morbidly curious into this area, because if you go looking for the demons, they might be the ones to find you. The point of the, the gospel reading for today that Jesus gives is that if you have a strong man in the house, it takes a stronger man than him to break into the house. Now Jesus isn't saying that we should go and break into our neighbor's houses because they're weaker than we are. He's reminding us that in this battle of the spiritual battle that goes on in our world, that Jesus is the stronger man. The strong man, the evil one, he looks like he's ruling and reigning on the earth causing people to be oppressed by demons, causing people to be pulled away from the truth of the word by their morbid curiosity. But Jesus himself is the stronger man. He cast these demons out with a word. And even the demons shudder at the name of Jesus as it's brought forward. Jesus is the stronger man. And in fact, when Satan thought he had won, that he had killed the very Son of God, Three days later, Jesus rises from the dead, but not before he descends into hell to proclaim his victory over the strong man, over the evil one. Jesus descends into hell and shows once and for all that he is the strongest, that Satan has been defeated, and that he will never be able to pull you from the salvation that God has given to you. One day, when Christ reigns again upon this earth, the evil one will be thrown into hell, and hell will be sealed by the stronger man. And no one, no devil, no demon, no Beelzebul will ever be able to come out of that and tempt us again. We pray for that day. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly, rescue us from this world, from this evil of sin and death that we are in. A little bit later in the text, as Jesus is talking here, he, he makes a statement that if you're not for me, you're against me. It's very clear as Jesus does that. There is no spiritual uh, one, uh, there's no one that's spiritually neut neutral. You are either Christ's or you're not. You don't get to be lukewarm. We're warned about that in the book of Revelation. The church that was lukewarm, Jesus says, I spit them out of my mouth. To be apathetic, to be not concerned about your salvation, to not have gone to church for the longest time, that's a, a sign of the fruit that you're not bearing. 
Remember, I use this example all the time in the church. An apple tree produces apples, an orange tree produces oranges, and if I think you're sleeping, I will say a peanut tree produces, and someone will answer peanuts. No peanut tree, remember. But what does the Christian produce? The Christian produces good works. Not good works that save us, but the, the Christian produces good fruit that trusts in the stronger man, that confesses the stronger man, that believes in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, come into our world to rule and to reign and to make his kingdom an eternal kingdom to all who believe in him. What a great text for today. Well, as we pray today, the catechetical review, we're going to jump around a little bit since we're not at home and I don't have my bookmarks. Today we pray in the fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. What does this mean? We pray in this petition that our Father in heaven would not look at our sins or deny our prayer because of them. We are neither worthy of the things for which we pray nor have we deserved them. But we ask that he would give them all to us by grace, for we daily sin much and surely deserve nothing but punishment. So, too, we will certainly forgive and gladly do good to those who sin against us. Forgiving, forgiveness that God gives to us is a fruit that the Christian produces. I, we also read that because as we're here at the seminary and Vicar is in training, if you will, there will be a time when he's ordained when God will give him the authority to forgive your sins, pointing you to what Christ has already done. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers for this evening, we pray for our seminaries and our colleges. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, source of abiding knowledge, through word and spirit you both enlighten the minds and sanctify the lives of those whom you draw to your service. Look with favor on the seminaries and colleges of our church. Bless those who teach and those who learn, that all the baptized may apply themselves with ready diligence to the task and faithfully fulfill their service according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way, kindle our hearts, and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to give you just a little look around over my shoulder here at the campus with the sun going down. It's a, a beautiful sight. It was absolutely a gorgeous day today. 72 degrees, a little light breeze, fall is in the air. What a great gift. Well, as we close out tonight, God bless you and have a great evening. I will uh, find a new place on the campus tomorrow and give you another look and we'll continue being strengthened and encouraged by God's word. Go in his peace. Amen.